Hello, this is Mark Denham, and I was asked whether or not I could have a look at a friend's son's audio project, which they were doing. And I had a look, and I thought, you know what, this probably could be easier solved with a video. So for my friend's son, and for you, a video. The issue was that my friend's son had produced some audio, and it sounded rubbish. His words to his mum, not mine, and his mum had asked me to have a look at this. So I did have uh, a little look, uh, asked, for a, uh, asked for a sample sent to me, and it did sound rubbish. So I then asked, like, grab a screenshot of the, the software and send me that as well so I can just have a little look. And what I could see was over here in the, the effects rack here, you can see that you have, uh, you have a number of effects that you can add to this. And uh, this happens either in the waveform or in the multi-track form. Now, what, uh, that what had actually happened was that the order of these uh, effects was in the wrong order, hence why it sounded absolutely terrible. And it does make a big difference because when you add effects like this, in the effects rack it processes number one before it goes to number two before it goes to number three before it goes to number four and so on and so forth so if you get your effects in the wrong order then it's not going to have the effect that you want at all um now i had spoken with him beforehand and suggested things and he got one simple thing wrong in that he had one effect out of order and that made the rest very difficult. Now, I've recorded just a, a sample piece of audio here, which is not too bad. The issue he had was with uh, background noise. Now, this piece of audio isn't too bad. You can uh, see in the, um, in the bottom view here, in the spectral frequency view, in the, uh, the preview editor as well, you can see uh, that uh, there is, um, there's noise, obviously, while I'm speaking. And then there's, there's the tailing off and um, my, my lip smacking at the start, which was very bad because I had a cup of tea just before I recorded this, which is very bad for recording voiceover. But here is the sound. We play the best music on Mark FM. OK, so there it is. Now, that doesn't have any uh, any background noise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just create a, uh, a new audio file here. And that's what six seconds we'll call that. So I'm going to create a new audio file and I'm going to go into the generate and I'm going to generate tones here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to generate a, uh, a quick tone and uh, you will hear when I generate the tone, we'll just create, actually we'll create some noise. What we'll do is we'll create some, uh, some white noise and that can just, uh, that can signify instead the, um, the, the fan perhaps. So we've got 10 seconds worth of noise. Now, no fan ever is going to be that loud. So what we'll do is we will just, uh, well in fact, what we'll do is we'll normalize it. We'll normalize this so we have a, uh, a better, representation of background noise because my audio doesn't have too much background noise in it so we'll normalize it to let's just say minus 41 decibels there it is you can barely see it now but you can still hear it all right so what we'll do is we'll drag this into the uh, the multi-track we'll start a brand new multi-track uh no template needed for this i'm just going to mix these two together very quickly uh there is the background noise there's my voice we play the best music on Mark FM. Now, uh, for the purposes of this, I mean, that is ludicrously loud still. It's overpowering my voice, which is um, not good by any stretch of the imagination at all. So let's just see if we turn this down just a little bit more and we'll see whether we can get it without it overpowering my voice. But whether it does or doesn't for this, I'm not producing anything from this. It doesn't matter. This is just to show you the importance of the effect racks. We play the best music on Mark FM. Right, okay, let's try that. We play the best... Well, that's not too bad now. You can still hear it, and there it is. And now you can badly see it here in the spectral frequency view. You can see that background noise. So, let's say that that is an equivalent of the audio that he had. We play the best music on Mark FM. With a fan whirring away in the background. Maybe his PC was doing something else at the time. The fan is whirring away at the background. Now, the easiest way to get rid of that is just to quickly grab a sample here. Amplitude statistics, scan selection, your true peak amplitude and your peak amplitude here. These are the figures. So if you're going to go in now uh, into the dynamics effect, you can either get rid of it with an auto gate. Uh, and if you set it at minus 60, you should get it without affecting the quality of the audio. So let's set that 
at minus 60. And let's see what that does now to the spectral frequency view. If we have a look at that, there you are. You can see we play the best music on Mark FM. So that's cleaned up quite nicely. The other way you could do it is uh, with a, instead of doing that, you could go for an expander instead, which I always think is a slightly na more natural. But um, let's have a look and see the effect of the expander. For the benefit of this, though, I'm going to go with a. Um, I'm going to go with boost that up a little bit, and it's not really made much effect. So we'll stick with the noise gate anyway, the auto gate here, and you can see that we have cleaned that up nicely. Okay, so yeah. It's we not... play the best music on Mark FM. It's not ideal, but you can see the difference between the top here, which is the actual audio, and the bottom is the preview window. The preview window shows you what you are actually doing, the effect that you're having. So now we may want to add a little bit of uh, equalization to that. So we'll just add a bit of parametric EQ, and that's a bit of a crazy one. But let's just give it a, um, a generic high pass, shall we? We play the best music. Now, we're going to just add a little bit more top end to that. Music on Mark FM. Maybe not that much. That's too much. We play the best music on Mark FM. Okay, um, this doesn't have to be perfect. It's just a demonstration. And now perhaps we want to add maybe a little bit of compression. There are many options you've got here. You've got the speech volume leveler. You've got the single band compressor, the multi band compressor. Or you could do it in dynamics processing as well. The The thing is here, a compressor is basically something that alters the dynamic range of the audio. Now you can see here, let's just close the uh, the preview window for a moment. And you can see here, there is a bit of dynamic range. Quiet, very loud. Okay, so you've got quiet here and you've got louder here. What the compressor will do is you set your threshold, your ratio, and uh, you will see that, uh, hello, Mr. John. Mr. John has signed in on TeamViewer. You will see that uh, when, when you apply the compressor, it has an effect by making the quieter, the louder bits quieter by reducing it based on the threshold and the ratio. And um, then you add what's called a makeup gain back to it, which will uh, then boost the whole audio back up. So in effect, you are making the quieter bits louder and the louder bits quieter. For the benefit of this, we'll use a single band compressor and we will stick back on the uh, the preview window. The easiest way to do this, select the whole audio and all you need to do again is go into amplitude statistics, scan the selection. And if we look at the, uh, the values here, we are going to need to drag this down a little bit. The average RMS is minus 47. That's very, very low. We're not going to set a compressor that low. But what we'll do is we'll have a little look here and we'll set the threshold, let's just say, at minus 20. I mean, that's that's not bad, is it? Ratio for voiceover, we'll call it 3 to 1. Attack, we'll attack quicker. Release is fine. And then you can see here, if we move that out of the way, what that's done, because I've set it quite with a, um, a threshold of minus 20, you can see it's made the whole audio quieter. So what we'll do is we'll boost that up a little now, and then you can see that's just a little bit too much because we've gone above zero, and you never, ever want to go above zero dB. Not too bad if you're in 32-bit float, but if you're in 16 or 24-bit, going above zero dB in your processing, you've ruined your audio. So that's not too bad now. That isn't too bad, okay? We play the best music on Mark FM. And then maybe, maybe we'll just add a little bit of mastering perhaps as well. Slight amount of loudness maximizer. And we'll call it, let's say, 20% loudness maximizer. A little bit of reverb, 20%. And maybe just a tiny little bit of exciter as well, because we have added quite a lot of top end already. We play the best music on Mark FM. So there you go. Now that's that's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but for the purposes of this, it'll do. Because you can see in the actual window here, you've got your background noise in this section here and this section here. But when you go down to the process version, that's not bad. Now, the important thing here, what my friend's son had done is basically followed what I'd said, but slightly out of order. And you can see here, if I move this now, this is the dynamics, that's the noise gate down here. Oh no, look at that. Because of the compression now, 
you can and you can hear it. We play the best music on Mark FM. So because of the compression now coming before the compression and the mastering coming before the noise has been eradicated, what you've done is you've boosted the noise to a huge level and that noise gate that you've set based on your amplitude statistics scan is now no longer effective. Because of the compression and the makeup gain, you have increased the uh, loudness of the noise, which is not what you wanted to do at all. Now, these here, parametric equalizer, equalize it before you compress it because you're equalizing as close to the true sound as you can. Once you get into compressing, then uh, you are altering the dynamic range of that audio. So equalize before you compress. But importantly, if you do have this fan noise here, if you have that fan noise, you have to deal with that first. Now, ideally, you'd want to record in a quiet environment where you can't. But there may be times where you can't record in a quiet environment. Like maybe you're recording on a portable recorder at uh, an event, a conference or an event, and you are going to pick up a bit of background rumble and burble and stuff like that. Maybe perhaps your fan on your PC is just incredibly loud and you can't record without it. If you put the dynamics back at the start in the chain, you can see that that background noise is dealt with. That's as good as you're going to get from the um, from the clip that we started with. That is as good as you're going to get. If we turn all of this off and go back and hear it, totally unprocessed. We play the best music on Mark FM. Now, if we turn it back on and just the noise gating back on, you can just hear the effect that that has had. We play the best music on Mark FM. There's no background noise anymore. So it is so important when you are setting multiple effects up in the effects rack, think of the effect and the order that you're doing. For example, if you were to add a bit of reverb in here, I'm going to turn the mastering off and I'm just going to add in a little bit of reverb. So we'll add in some studio reverb and uh, we'll go with that. We'll, we'll have 100% of the dry and 40% of the wet. Too high, too high, but we play the best music on Mark FM. Now, you've got a bit of reverb in there. If you then add a multiband compressor, broadcast compressor, harshest compressor in the multiband compressor, we play the best music on Mark FM. It doesn't sound too bad. It doesn't sound great, but it doesn't sound too bad. But if you move that multiband compressor above the studio reverb, you've done all your compressing before then reverbing. So what you can see is we have created something now that's going right, right up to the zero dB as well. But listen to the difference. We play the best music on Mark FM. And that's just because... The reverb is coming after the compressor as opposed to before. So you're putting the reverb onto the final audio, which is why it's normally done in um, in mastering here. That's why I've done it there. You can add it in your chain, but if you are adding it into your chain, think about carefully where it is going to go. If we then move this dynamics out of order again, you'll even hear now the background noise is reverbed. We play the best music on Mark FM. So think very carefully about what you're going to do. This is a drastic example here because you've got the, uh, the dynamics, which is that noise gate, out of place. So, yeah, very, very careful. If you are placing multiple effects, whether in the waveform here or whether in the multi-track, then um, think about the order that they're going in. Again, you could do this without using any of this. You could do this by going into the effects menu, um, and if we go back to the original waveform, we'll just go back to the original waveform in the files menu, and there it is. That's no, we want the one with the uh, what we want. I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to make a copy of this. We're going to make a copy of this. Copy to new, and you can see now we don't have the processing on that. So there it is. We play. What you could do is you could go through and you could add each one individually but again if you don't add that noise gating first and if you get them out of order you're going to get a horrible horrible end result so yeah what he'd done 
my friend's son, was basically correct. I told him, you know, how to process it, to add a little bit of, um, you know, a bit of processing to the voice before then laying it over the, the music or the sound effects and then master the final output. That was my advice. And I'd said to him, you know, what you need to do is you need to think about a bit of EQ, a bit of compression, um, maybe a hard limiter as well. Put those sort of effects in there, but do it carefully and sparingly rather than just banging straight in with a, uh, a full speech volume level or a broadcast multiband compressor on the voice. Just, just do it carefully, um, you know. And I'd said to him, you know, like if, if you've got noise, noise gate it. Best idea, record without the noise. But if you have got noise, then uh, noise gate it. But what the only issue he'd done was he'd put the noise gate, I think it was second or third. So in the parametric EQ, he'd boosted the uh, the noise and then put in the um, the compression and then the noise gate. So that was the issue, was that by the time the noise gate was getting to the audio, the uh, the compressor, as you can see, if we go back to this one, and we'll turn off the multiband compressor, just leave the single band compressor on. Look at the difference that's making. The quieter parts are louder, the louder parts are uh, also, and it's all a much more close dynamic range here. So um, that's it as it is. You can see here we're around minus 15 dB, and here we're probably about minus 6 dB there. Whereas if you go down to here, that's higher, much higher, and that the difference between that and that is much less. The effect that has is it also pulls up the noise as well and the noise gate just won't work. So yeah, layer up your effects. Do it. You'll get the best audio by layering up your effects. But make sure when you do it, you think very carefully about the audio you're doing. If you do get it wrong and your audio sounds particularly rubbish because you have got it wrong by putting that, say, there. And again, we put the noise is back. If you've done it this way, then you can put it back to where you want it to go. Ah, oh, yeah. Problem solved. Put it back to where you want it to go. Then you can apply it. And there you go. We play the best music on Mark FM. So, yeah, layer up your effects. Get the best effect that you can. That's nothing special. It's just for the benefit of this demonstration. But by layering up your effects, you can get some pretty decent effects in Adobe Audition. Make sure, however, when you do layer them up, that they are in the right order. That's the very, very important thing you have to do. Hope this has helped you. And if it has, consider subscribing if you want. You can also get the best bits of my Drive Time podcast if you subscribe as well. Thank you for watching.